going today we're going to use the Arstas Club session to debug two packages that we recently submitted to Bioconductor, Bezium Stitch submitted by Nick and the combo buddy submitted by Luis. Um, both of them are like in different stages of the um, review process. Um, in the case of Bezium Stitch, uh, we already got back um, like a full review from uh, Marcel Ramos um who's part of the Biconductor core team um over here uh um and uh link has already started working on addressing some of the feedback that we got um there's a few things that are maybe more general uh one of them is um this lazy data being true um that actually gets added by like the use this, use data uh, uh, functions. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with like lazy data, true or false, um, if you have it as false, before you can actually use a data set that is part of a package, you have to like attach it to the namespace with a data function. This is like similar to how you attach a package to the search namespace with a library function. Uh, like the functions of the package. Um, so like, um, I don't really know the reason why Bioconductor uh, doesn't like lazy data. Um, um, maybe to reduce name clashes. Um, that would be my friend guess. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing they were like, oh, please, you know, change the spelling of some functions so they're a bit more like uh, according to the Bioconductor uh, syntax. Or like some functions over here, like VLSP, like um, um, like use more specific names. Um, so Nick has been working on this, but you said that like you um, right now, like on your latest commit, there is an error, right? Yeah, on this, but not on GitHub Actions. So on the single package builder, right? You're getting an error over here, right? Um, argument is of length zero. Um, oh. um, so like, if you try running this manually, you don't know, repeat zero. Yeah, no, there's no error when I run it interactively. Um, are you using the same R microconductor versions on um, your computer? R, um, not sure about conductor. Yeah, three twenty is like the current develop version. Oh, okay, so then now, yeah. um, that sometimes could be like um, that could maybe help identify the errors at times. Yeah. Um, I guess I don't actually have a three twenty version myself on my laptop. Um. Mm. Like one way to debug things would be like to do that. Another one would be like to actually download the Docker image by Conductor Devel. Um and like try to use that. Um, um, now on GitHub actions, you see you don't get the error, right? It just goes through. It just goes through. Um, so let's just check what version you're using on GitHub actions too. Right. So you're actually using 320 with a developed Docker image there. Okay. Um we do have 320 on JHPC, so that's another option to test things at JHPC. Um now, this machine that is failing is a Linux machine. Um, so maybe that's actually like not a bad idea to test on, on JHPC. Um, so let me log into JHPC. Um,
Congrats. Um, I'm going to sell some packages that I use on my, um, on our, um, our profile. I don't install it, but like um use some dependencies. Um, cool. So while that installs, um, there's a few things you can do to reproduce things locally. Um, on the GitHub Actions workflow, we can find like the step that um, um, actually um, um, installs a package. So there's this uh, re remotes install local dependency true with like building the vignettes command um, set to false. Eventually um, on this pass number two, uh, I do build the vignettes. So that could be one thing we could um, do to like uh, this command here would actually install the dependencies like what I'm doing right now manually. <laughs> um, that's one option, but since um, GitHub Actions workflow is actually working well, we can actually go to the single package builder for Biconductor and check what are the commands they, they run. So they run over here like our command build with like all these options. Um, and uh, that's the one that is failing right now. Uh, so once I have all the dependencies installed, that's like what I'm gonna try to run. Um, although right now here, like you have a dependency that needs to be compiled, so it's taking a bit of time. Run. Um, so, um, like in general, Casper uh, Daniel Hansen he maintains the Conda R installations at JHPC, and he typically has a version that we could be using that we could use for um, our package development. Um, if we were to do it on, like, if I wanted to do this on my laptop, as I mentioned, one option is to use the Biconductor Docker image. Um, um uh, mm. oh uh where like if you have docker installed you can just run this command and like will like um power up the bioconductor build image um, these images are typically updated on Fridays, if I remember correctly. Um, um, and they have like all the system dependencies for uh, bioconductor packages, like the whole ecosystem of bioconductor packages. Um, so sometimes that might be easier than like using JHPC because you could be maybe using a package that has a system dependency that JHPC doesn't have installed. Um, so. And then the last version is like, um, um, we've had an artist's club about this, about how to have like multiple um, uh, R versions installed in your computer. Um, um, we did this from 2021. Um, but like, 
basically have to, let's say, download uh, on Mac, you have to download like the, the package file. You need to run like um, a command on the terminal window so you can have multiple versions installed and then you'll be able to, to install it. Uh, on Windows, it's a little bit easier because you can like actually specify different paths for things. Um, rename is you have like, let's say R4.4 underscore by C320 and that will work uh, like on the, on the, on the prompts when you're installing R, you can choose like the directory name where it's installed. Um, so um, since I might need more of this, um, I'm going to try to, let's see. Oh, never mind. This, this uh, um, I'll be using GPC for now. So I'm going to copy this command over here. Um, and let me try to run it. Now, um, the reason why I'm running it here locally is like, we might be able to get more output uh, than what uh, the single package view under a uh, log file, say. Um, although the other option is um, to um, to actually um, interactively run things. Okay, so these fail fairly fast. Um, it's missing some packages I need. Uh, Um, I don't know why it's, um, not detected. While that's running, I'll go to um, uh, over here. Actually, uh, since I have a since I have medium stitch on my computer. I'm just going to open a terminal window so I can like uh, easily execute code. What? Any memory for this? I mean, yeah. Um, I don't think so. All right. So let's go to the top. Normally, these things don't matter much. Um, I better run R. Ah. Uh, all right, need to load the right version of R. Mm -hmm. This is all like a web calligraphy setup. Typically, we've had an error there, like. Uh, the code chunk would have said that's earlier. Um, okay, we don't have uh, VZIP stitch installed. Uh, let's actually install it. Let's see how that our other one went. Um, I don't know why it's not fine by C style, even though I do have it installed. So. We'll abandon ship there. We'll go to this other strategy then. Um, Uh, 
Okay. That works. Let's load a bunch of libraries. Um, Running your code over here. Mm. All of this seems to work, right? So it's like line 280 or so? Yeah, it's. All of these looks okay to use so far, right? Yeah. Oh, I healed. Crap. Mm. Do I need more memory? Yeah, well, I guess so. Uh, mm. Out of a memory handler. What's it? What's variable hosting? Host name, yeah, in capital. Um, please specify more work. Um, dash dash mem equals, um, and then something capital G. All right, let's go back to the um, libraries. It takes a while to load the museum stitch. Now, uh, like now that we have some of the data, like it's running a little bit faster. Right? These were a crash, right? So I'm gonna run them one by one. <laughs> now, who's that? The uh, next, uh... and the next one. Yeah. Um, no, it was there. It was on these lines, and the prep Fiji course and prep Fiji image. Um, okay. So we had to run the GTF lines, like um, like right now, uh, when I was running it myself at GHPC, that's where it crashed. Not, oh, not okay. the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. Okay. Not the um, single package builder. Right. Um. Let's look at one line to setting crash, 267 to 281. So it's actually in this code chunk that it crashes.
you didn't put um the same syntax of like the, the time, right? Oh, that's true. Because uh, I know like these functions are um these messages are from special IBB. Yeah. Right? Oh. Um okay, we get those warnings. Uh this SP object looks okay. It's not that big. All right, so we couldn't repeat this bug. Right. Uh we got to the point where like we ran all the code that was that's bugging out on single, single package builder. Okay, so um um you're sure that like you're using the same um uh, actual commit version um so it's technically not but all it was increment the version number and the package state those are the only differences between the so like one on github and on bioconductor so this one is behind 0 0.99 11. Um, this one's the most up to date. The bioconductor is most up to date, and then um, the get one on GitHub actions that succeeded is a couple of commits behind, but it's just incrementing the version of and package state. Mm. So it's not technically exactly the same, but it should be functionally. Like, doesn't it run like it would last? Um, yeah, I mean, I did. You did push this, right? Oh. You, you kind of push it to GitHub. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I guess, uh, yeah. I, you could just push it to GitHub then. Right. Yeah. I can do that now. Oh. Sorry. I'll do that. Excuse me. Right. Like oh, I just did it, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't need to have these things if if you don't have any anything to delete on the news. Yeah, um, you don't need to include them for every single package version. Right. So, what are other differences? I guess um, the single package builder has some. Specific configuration things, um, like the um, the use of environment variables uh, that specify some some things that, but um, I have no idea if that would be quite different. Um, the R version could be slightly newer, even though here it says R version four point four. Um, the R version that we're using. Um, uh, JSPC might be actually this is really new. This is today's version. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, so I don't know if it's memory based. Hey, at this point, like. I'm not sure what to do. We will just need to ask for help. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could point them to this video. I think it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> we try to do. Uh, but um, um, the other thing you could do is just bump the version again mm -hmm. and like submit sub submit a new bump, and like that will trigger a new single package builder run. Yeah, and you could maybe there was a trans a transient error on single package builder that like. Um, like will have been fixed. Yeah, uh, I tried it once, so it it did it two times in a row. Um, mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this this is something where like um, at this point, since we've tried to reproduce the error with like that specific version of um, ARM by conductor, um, and we didn't, we weren't able to do it. Uh, it's worth asking for help. Also, since the the GitHub Actions was also using that version of RMB conductor, I didn't repeat here, right? Um, 
to uh like uh mm -hmm. uh Mm. Mm. They have some files, I don't remember exactly where, but um, where they specify like all of the environment options that they use on the single package builder. Um, but um, I mean, it might be in this repository somewhere. Um, um, And I, I don't remember all of them in detail. Like, uh, I think it shouldn't be a memory issue because, uh, uh, well, like we noticed over here that like when I didn't have enough memory, it crashed earlier than in this code chunk over here. Um, plus, like the SP object that you made is like not that big, right? Two hundred megs, um, and I don't think there's any internal steps that make something like super big either, right? Um, at least on the special IBD functions. I don't know if you're over here. Um, I don't think, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Cool. So that will be all for Resim Stitch. Uh, do people have any questions about what we were, our, um, what we were doing so far? That was Resim um, Stitch. Now let's try the comma buddies. Um, the couple of buddies is a different story because the issue that we have right now uh, is that we are timing out on the build report. And that's because we're exceeding the limit of 15 minutes that we have on the single package builder. Um, if we look at uh, the GitHub actions for the couple of buddies, um, Sorry, actions. Um, in this last one that Luis ran, um, let's see on Ubuntu, um, this step over here uh, into install dependencies too took 16 minutes. This is the one that like will build the vignettes and like basically is doing the equivalent of that R command build. You can see it over here. It's part of the process. Um, um, like. Um, uh, sure, like the code could also like install some dependencies, but like most of them have already been installed in like the first attempt. So this is a good proxy of that how much time we're actually uh, using right now to run things. Um, so the package is taking like on GitHub Actions is also taking over fifteen minutes, um, and I guess like we could yeah. Um, um, the GitHub Actions workflow for, um, that we have from Byte CDs doesn't really warn you about the 15 minutes. Um, so uh, even though the that GitHub Actions workflow tests a lot of things, it has some differences against the single package builder, such as this like limiting of the 15 minutes, um, which can be a little bit of annoying because you feel like you're like really close to having a, a full package and then you run into things that you're missing, right? That you need to change a bit. Now, um, the comma buddies itself, let me look at the code for it. Sorry, this is something is in another way for me. Uh, um, was it here? Yeah. Um, so um, we'll look at the health file for it. The package has three vignettes. Um, and um, you know we wanted to include like we wanted to document the package pretty well, right? Um, and so we included a few different examples and all of that. Um, the one easy option is to like reduce the amount of code that we have in the vignettes, or actually like uh, not actually run some of the code. Um, but that I feel is actually detrimental for users uh, because then. Um, you know, we, we included all this documentation because we thought it would like make it easier for people to understand parts of the package, right? Um, so 
in this case, since Louise made the package, she might have like a good idea of like what functions actually take longer to run than others. Um, if not, uh, if we go to like the um, like the GitHub Actions output, um, something that like is included in general on these GitHub Actions is on the R command check step. Um, there is um, um, we do provide timing for anything that takes longer than five seconds to run. So I guess here we can see that like plot ex markers express all takes like um, um, 13 seconds to run or so. Um, so we try to reduce the use of that function. You have like other functions here that like take quite a bit of time to run. And I will give you an idea like what are your um, slower running functions. Right? Um, uh, of course you get um, run things manually, uh, like on an on an R window, and like I don't know, say like says time, some commands. So here I'm gonna just use like sleep, um, and then says time again, and just um, um, uh, but this. This type of strategy takes a while because you have to like do this with like a bunch of different functions and figure out like which are the ones that are like slow, right? If you you know if you don't have an idea like which are the functions that are slow in your package. Now, yeah, Leo, I think I have a, a one that I know takes a while. Um, mm -hmm. It's like the finding. It's the one versus all marker finding takes a long long time, um, but it's like pretty. I guess like essential to the marker finding vignette. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so even one option would be to try to use like uh, even small, less data to to run it, um, to try to make it run faster. Um, that would be one strategy there. But um, um, like these strategies, like sometimes they can only uh, shave down like, you know, a, a few seconds here, there. And it can maybe take quite a bit of um, uh, reworking. Um, mm -hmm. There is another thing that I, I uh, recently taught Nick about, uh, which um, um, I think we were using the use this package, right? Nick, when I talk, talk about uh, documentation files, um, a single documentation for multiple functions. Oh. Um... <laughs> I can't remember if we use the thesis, but yeah. uh, I think we use thesis. Let me uh, see. Yeah. Oh, uh, this I is know. an example of that. Right. That's what you're saying. Okay. So, um, if you have examples that, let's say, uh, function one needs to download some data before you can use it. Then function two uses the output of function one before you can use it. And then function three uses the output of function two before you can use it. And so like in each of your help files, you're documenting, like downloading the data and then running these functions. Um, so basically they're like highly related functions. A strategy you can, you can use is to have a single documentation file for all of them. So this is one example from the use this package where they have like uh, one, two, three, four, five functions, all documented in the same same help file. Um, one um, constraint is that any argument name that you use uh, has to have the same definition across all of the functions and have like uh, multiple uh, definitions for the arguments. Uh, so by that I mean like you know these descriptions over here. Um, uh, if you have that, then you could have like a single example section where you run your functions sequentially. Um, and that way you can avoid um, like processing some data in example one then using the output of that and like reprocessing basically again on example two uh, and then doing the same thing in example three. Um, uh, so that like sometimes can save um, uh, some time. And the way you do that is um, this 
particular uh, example that I'm showing is uh, from the this rproc uh, file uh, from from use this. Um, the way you can do that is you have to use the Roxygen name um, param parameter to actually specify like what is the name of that health file that you want to have. So here they call it like project underscore utils. And if you go to the URL, we can see that like that is reflected over here, project underscore utils.html. That is the name. Uh, by default, we don't use this because the name is automatically the name of the function. Um, and so that would be for the main thing that you're describing. Now, for other functions that you're describing in that same health file, you then use this describe in syntax from Roxygen to the space, the same name that you use on the other one. Um, and like you have like a lot less information because, well, in this case, uh, this function doesn't have any arguments. Uh, but this one over here, project set, does have some arguments, so they like define them over here. Um, but you can see it doesn't have like a title, it doesn't have a description, it doesn't have a detail section, it doesn't have an example section, because all of that is like included in the main, um, in a, in this case, in the um, in the main uh, pieces of Roxygen documentation that uh, they have. So that is one strategy you could try to use to try to uh, reduce uh, length of time. Um, if you have like highly related functions that are, you need to run them sequentially to, to exemplify their use. Um, uh, 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 so you have the strategy of like trying to find things on the vignettes that like um, uh, either you can make shorter or use like less data so they can run faster. Um, uh, you have the strategy of like uh, the single documentation files. And then the last one is actually um, editing some of the tests. Um, um, if you have like really long, you know, tests that would take a long time to run. Um, and for that, uh, uh, um, Bioconductor has this thing called long tests. Um, that uh, if you want to configure, you can actually do that, uh, where the difference between short and long tests is that um, the long tests um, um, can run up to, have to run up in less than six hours, whereas the regular tests have to run in less than 40 minutes. Uh, but if you notice, this is not for R command build, this is for R command check. Um, Right now, like in the combo buddies, the single package builder is failing, it's timing out at our command build. Um, it hasn't even tried to run our command check. So like tests, I would like modify those later. Um, um, if let's say you manage to uh, reduce the our command build time to less than 15 minutes, but then later on you have a timeout on the checks, right? Um, that's not the current scenario that you have with the combo buddies, mm -hmm. but uh, you, you know, you might have it, I don't know. Um, so, um, um, yeah, something I've done myself in the past for vignettes is that if I have something that takes a while to run, so in your case, Luis, you have this um, uh, find markers function that maybe takes a while mm -hmm. to run. Sometimes what I do is like, I put that code chunk with an eval equals false, um, uh, but then I also have another code chunk uh, with echo false, so it's not actually shown, not displayed on the yet. Or like I like behind the scenes load, load the data, um, like um, uh, like uh, you know here since you're you know using experiment hub, you could have like uh, some output files already you know, like an experiment hub, <laughs> um, uh, load them behind the scenes, um, and then use them right. Uh, yeah. Um, it's a bit of a hack, uh, but like, um, uh, uh, you know, a few people use that. The, um, all these strategies that I've documented, I think they're good. They're like, um, you know, lead to like packages where you have code that is tested, that is documented, that like your um, users can run and reproduce and like get basically the same outputs. 
Um, there is another strategy, which I don't, um, I'm not a huge fan of, and I think like a lot of people in Biconductor are not fans of, which is to have uh, uh, vignettes hosted elsewhere, like like documentation hosted elsewhere outside of the package. Um, such that like you, it's not, it's never tested on Biconductor, um, uh, but it's available for users. The downside for that is that like uh, uh, you then uh, lose the benefit of having your package tested on Linux, Windows, and Mac every single day by Biconductor. Um, and so like if you have code on your vignettes that like breaks, you won't notice it until like an, uh, a user reports it back to you. Uh, whereas if you have it on your package, um, you'll notice it like probably like before any users use, notice it. Um, um, so that's a strategy that some people have used. Like for example, like we look at the Lima vignette. The Lima vignette is like over a hundred pages long. <laughs> it definitely takes longer to compile, I think, than the I mean to run than the fifteen minutes, <laughs> right? Or um, there's other packages that do that. Um, they use that strategy. Um, cool. So, um, are there questions on on the different strategies that I talked about? So, uh, the one the one that you showed um, for using project uh, like one of the uh, the output of one function goes uh, to the other mm -hmm. the utility is this just for the documentation yeah just for the documentation yeah yeah just so you have like a single example section um Imagine like like this, you actually always need to run it before you can read, run this. Mm -hmm. And you always need to run it before you run this. And like uh, this step, let's say it takes like 20 seconds to run, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to duplicate the 20 seconds. Oh, oh. so yeah, like um, I haven't been as conscious about the 15 minute timeout. On, like, uh, on our packages when we're developing them. But we'll need to be more conscious about that, um, like just looking at the GitHub Actions output, um, like on the, uh, basically on the uh, install dependencies two step, which is the one that's actually running our command builds. Um, um, oh, so like, I mean, the machines are slightly different. So like something could take less than 15 minutes here, but might be a little bit over 15 minutes on the single package builder. Um, so, uh, you know, we can, uh, the further you, the further you're away from like the 15 minutes uh, uh, threshold, the better, right? Like, uh, uh, if you like just like one second under that, you might like, uh, not always make it. Okay, I'll stop the recording then.